And today's episode is called Don't Be an A.S.K. That's an acronym. Don't be an ask. <laughs> right, Lyman? Take it away. <laughs> you, you know, let me say don't be an ask, okay? <laughs> Not the other one, but as she said, A-S-K, don't be an ask. What we're talking about are those individuals that are always seeking knowledge. That's what ask stands for, always seeking knowledge, but never executing. Uh, give you an example, and you ever had this happen? Maybe when you were in Hollywood or maybe it was a concierge where well, someone would come up to you and say, hey, can I pick your brain? Can you give me two minutes? And of course, we want to help people. And so you say, sure, no problem. But we're thinking two minutes and that two minutes turns into 20 minutes. And they're asking you a litany of questions. You give them advice only for a week or two later. They come back and say, um, I know you told me to do X, Y, Z, but I didn't have time. And now the situation is worse. Unleash your potential with MetaMindStream, disrupting possibilities. Dive into the fusion of positive neuroscience and business strategies with Anne Scotland and Dr. Lyman Montgomery. Break free from limiting beliefs, expand extraordinary lives, and boost business profitability. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Focused MetaMindStream. We are so excited to have you here today, um, helping us disrupt what's possible which means in your business and your life, how do we get rid of those limiting beliefs? And what are the practical steps we can take to overcome them and move our business and our life experience into a much happier and more um, easy place of living? Why live life the hard way, right, Lyman? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, so when we do this, if you are just joining us, we do this by combining the principles of positive neuroscience with actionable business strategies, later lifestyle strategies in the two parts of the show. First half is business. The second half is about lifestyle. We have a lot of fun there. Um, if you are just viewing with us for the first time, please like, subscribe and share this link with someone who would enjoy the show. We would super appreciate that. So what we do here is we basically have a candid and provocative conversation. We talk about meta mindset, what that means, about its influence in your daily life. We explore some taboo topics that are sometimes like, what? Nobody talks about this, but we're not afraid to. Um, and offering those insights for achieving financial stability and less stress. So we're really excited to share this day with you. And today's episode is called Don't Be an A.S.K. That's an acronym. Don't be an ask. <laughs> right, Lyman? Take it away. <laughs> you, you know, let me say don't be an ask, okay? <laughs> Not the other one, but as she said, A-S-K, don't be an ask. What we're talking about are those individuals that are always seeking knowledge. That's what ASH stands for, always seeking knowledge, but never executing. Uh, give you an example, and you ever had this happen, maybe when you were in Hollywood or maybe it was a concierge, where someone would come up to you and say, hey, can I pick your brain? Can you give me two minutes? And mm -hmm. of course, we want to help people. And so you say, sure, no problem. But we're thinking two minutes, and that two minutes turns into 20 minutes. And they're asking you a litany of questions you give them advice only for a week or two later, they come back and say, um, I know you told me to do X, Y, Z, but I didn't have time. And now the situation is worse. Uh, so yes. can I pick your brain again? Okay. <laughs> I have an example of this. One of the things that you would always easily get sucked into in Hollywood in particular was people, and I, I give them a little credit for being a good salesperson, but I didn't respond I was too nice. So um, they would say, hey, do you just have a minute of your time? And you know, someone you'd been introduced to before. And you're like, yeah, sure. And they're like, awesome. I was just wondering if you could do me the tiniest favor. I'm like, yeah, of course. They're like, listen, I just emailed you my entire manuscript. Can you read it for me? Proofread it. Yes. Let me know all your thoughts. Well, I am meticulous that my own writing takes me years sometimes. So I'm like, well, I'm really busy right now, but I'll try to take a look. And especially if it's someone you're like, oh, I really want to help this young artist. Um, you know, I really think they're amazing. And so over the next two or three months, you like slave away at this mm -hmm. manuscript that needs lots of work. And you're like, okay, here it is. And then they're like, oh, oh, thanks. I really appreciate that. But yeah, we decided not to make it. And they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Complete waste of time. Yeah. 
it, it happens. And, you know, I'm reminded of a friend of mine. We went to school together that for about two years would call me periodically for the same situation. Hey, man, uh, you still doing uh, business coaching? Yes, I am. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about starting a business and I wanted to pick your brain and find out as far as financing, uh, which option should I do? Should I do debt financing? Should I find? And eventually I said, let me ask you something. This is the fourth conversation we've had. Have you even registered for your business yet? Oh, no, I'm still gathering information. I said, I tell you what, when you do the first part, at least come up with a business name, then call me. Never heard from him again. No, no. No, it's just interesting. He would call periodically, at least once, twice a year, that same situation. Ask a thousand and one questions. You give him advice, do this, this, and the other, and he never executed. Ah, wow. And I think I think that that what we're saying right here before we go to our first break is uh, you know, instead of taking action, they only ask. So asking versus action yes. uh, is the difference. You can ask a little and take a lot of action and then maybe ask again. But when you just ask and and people get confused because they think the energy expended in asking is somehow taking them towards the goal. It is, but not if it's asking alone. If you aren't applying it, if you aren't taking you action, go. making application, uh, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you gather, you're never going to get there. Well, this is amazing. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, so everybody stick around. We're going to take a quick commercial break, come back to this. And then also in our second half, we're going to talk about in the lifestyle segment, people who always complain, but never apply <laughs> solutions. Mm. Don't even get me started. Uh, but first we're going to go back to don't be an ask. We'll see you in a moment. <laughs> Unleash the power of focused meta mindset lunch and learn sessions. Sharpen problem solving skills, spark innovation, foster collaboration, and build adaptability and resilience. Elevate your team's success and profits. Discover more at www.focusmetamindset.com. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Welcome back to Focus Meta Mindset and Meta Mind Stream today with Dr. Lyma Montgomery and myself. And we're talking about in our business segment today, don't be an ask. That is an A period, S period, K period, in case you're just joining us. And um, Lyma, tell us a little bit more about this. And then also, what are some action steps we can get do to get out of this buffle, I guess, that's what my yes. grandma used to call it, yes. that we get ourselves into? What can we do? When, when you are in business or you're thinking about going in business and maybe you're meeting with a client or a potential client, you want to steer clear of people that are ask, A-S-K, not the <laughs> other one that all of us have. But what happens is you can find yourself in this information answer loop where they ask questions, you provide information, they ask another question, you provide information. And it's almost like being on that proverbial hamster reel where they never get <laughs> off to implement. So for those of you that are just joining us, ASK is an acronym that stands for always seeking knowledge yet fail to execute. These are the ones that will say things like this. Hey, you have a, a two minutes for me uh, to pick your brain. Hey, can we uh, do lunch? I want to I ask you a couple of questions. Uh, or they might say, you know, I, I know you've worked with me before. At, and I know I'm probably bothering you, but it'll really, really help me if you could just spend a few minutes to help me solve a problem. And you would do that and they come back again and never implement. So how do we now overcome that, Ann? And let me ask you this question, because it's kind of interesting. Have you ever uh, been in a situation, in where someone has called you and said, I know you've helped me in the past. And I still want to be a client of yours, but I, I just got a couple of more questions before I sign up. You ever had that happen? Yes. That's a loop. That's a loop. It's a trap. Notice what they said. I know I want to be a customer, but I got a few more questions. And this might be the third or fourth conversation. You've answered all of their questions. And what they're doing is they're trying to build the house without getting a construction crew 
or an architecture firm. They're trying mm -hmm. to go in alone, do it themselves. They're going to mess it up because they don't want to invest in themselves and get an expert. So how do we get out of that loop in? The first one is when a person asks a question, make sure that that question is tied to a purpose. So I would always say something mm -hmm. like this. So if I understand the purpose of your question is you want to know X, Y, Z. And they oftentimes will say, uh, yeah. And then I say, I might follow up with, when it comes to asking questions, what do you plan to do with the information that's provided to you? Because that's going to let me know if they say, well, you know, I, I'm just curious. Cut them off. If they if you get answers like, and um, well, I just want to know for curiosity or for knowledge. Say, you ever had that one happen? Oh, I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I have research. had that happen. And it's like, oh, my God. And, you know, over time, you start getting to the point where you're like, OK, this is a waste of time. And you start learning these steps that you're you're sharing right now. And one of the uh, little tools I do, which is, you know, the purpose of asking is I yes. answer their question with a question. There you because go. Because I'm going to put the burden on them, not me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the That's question good. with the question. I'm happy to be helpful and I will be. But instead of letting them kind of goad you through a meaningless conversation, it's like, ask them a question. You can make a sale out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is great. The second point of the three point is number one, make sure that they're learning with the purpose. So they're asking because they really want to learn and there's a purpose for it. The second is focus them. Are they focused or they're scattered? Are they like squirrels? Mm -hmm all over the place. If a person is like a squirrel in their a squirrel in their conversation, you have to bring them into focus to your point by asking a question. So you mentioned five different things. What are you willing to work on first? So you not only focus them, but you help them set a clear path or prioritize rather than there's five questions and five sub questions to the five questions. So before you know it, you've spent 25 minutes and have answered 50 questions. When they start out saying, I only need two minutes of your time. The third part is, do they have an accountability system? I got to so go back to the squirrel, the though. Yes. I got to go back to the squirrel here. So <laughs> would you remember that uh, that video that went around YouTube a few years ago? It was about a golden retriever and a squirrel. And of course, it had the over the narration over the top of what the golden retriever is thinking in his brain. He's looking at this, he's looking at his toy, he's looking at that. He's like, and then he like, he literally goes like his entire body goes like this because he sees a squirrel. And mm -hmm. the question, it's really funny if you can find it to watch it. But so in our house, whenever someone is jumping to, is easily distractible and is not staying on target when they're not staying focused, we say squirrel, squirrel. There you go. So anyway, that's fun to use in my house. No, it is. That is, that is that's absolutely funny. I'm sorry I'm cracking myself up because I see that image, you know. You'll and enjoy it. I promise. It is very like fun. That. You know, people, you, you talk to them and they're all over the place. And you have to refocus them by asking a question to your point earlier. And the third part of that is asking, so what do you plan to do with this and who's going to hold you accountable? That's probably the most important question the accountability piece. Because let's face it, if I'm going to take time away from business to spend time with someone, I want to know, number one, the purpose or the intent behind it. Are they focused? Do they have a clear path of, to where they need to go or would like to go? And then I want to know, so who's going to hold you accountable for making sure it's done? Oftentimes, this is leads to a nice sale. They say, you know, I really don't have, that's probably the biggest problem. Well, that's why you need a coach and we can help mm -hmm. you. When you partner with us, we serve as that accountability partner to keep you on task, to make sure you stay focused and not be like <laughs> that rock wilder or go or retriever, I think you said, running around chasing well, squirrels well, all over well, the country. Well, and, and it's and so that, true. Yeah. Well, and I want to so touch on accountability here because you're just bringing it up again, which is, um, you know, the kind of accountability that we use. So 
when we're working with our clients, as you know, accountability is a friendly, fun experience Mm -hmm. 95% of the time. We don't want to be taskmasters. We don't want to be, you know, we're just like, give us bookends, check in, let's touch base with you. Let's go over the checklist. Every time we talk, like, how are we constantly keeping you moving towards your goal? Not static. Most people set goals and stay static. I'm like, don't stay static. You got to keep moving. And then every now and then, you know, maybe 5% of the time you get to someone where it's like, they're being incredibly stubborn and not taking action. And you're like, you know, you're paying me really good money Mm -hmm. to give you answers to take your business to exactly where you want it, but you won't do anything. So we're going to get, you know, then, then you come up that tiny little 5% of sort of tough love. If they don't respond to that, then we're like, you know what? I just don't have time to work with you because you're not taking action. I like, I don't want to be someone's like mean boss. Mm -hmm. I want to be your partner, your friend, your buddy who gives you positive encouragement and accountability, not nasty accountability. And if that's what you're looking for, then I'm the wrong person. (laughs) And you know, there's two questions on the questionnaire that we like to ask. And that is a willingness versus an inability. You can work with someone that might lack the inability. They don't have the skill. They don't have the Mm -hmm. knowledge. They don't have the a way forward, a clear path forward. But if a person or persons are unwilling to do the work, there's very little we can do for them. And that's why it has to be a situation where it's mutually beneficial for both. And we've had people pay a deposit, pay a retainer, but they simply won't do the work. It's almost as if they think, if I pay X amount of dollars, then magically through osmosis or something, the work is going to get done. And that's absolutely a fallacy. You have to do the work. Our role is to guide you to where you want to be, to identify the gaps in your business, in your life, and create a path forward for you, but also walk with you on that journey to success, however you define success. Would you agree, Anne? A qualified thought partner is what we do. That's our job as business coaches is to be a trained and qualified thought partner. You wouldn't need us if you had all the answers, right? So, but when you need answers you don't have, we are trained and qualified to give you those as your thought partner. And what I love about that is it's, it's a creation in progress, whatever it yes. is you're building in your business or your life, even it's a creation of progress. And we're your thought partner, which is fun and exciting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, that, and that's so true. You know, a thought partner help you think through work through, but ultimately you have to be about doing the work. You know, we can help you in so many different areas, but the one thing we cannot do we cannot do the hard work for you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, you have to do your own work. It's, you know, you can have the best Olympic coach in the whole world Mm -hmm. to yourself. But if you don't do the training, you will never win. You can throw millions of dollars if someone will sponsor you at that best Olympic coach. If you don't do the training, you will never win. Now, if you do the training and don't hire a coach, you probably also will never win. And this is what people tend to forget about in accountability. And and we always remind them around the principles of a focused meta mindset is it's a team effort. No one is so smart that they have all the answers to the challenge or their business needs because we all have different personalities, different experiences, different training. Mm -hmm. But bringing in experts who know how to fill in those gaps and work with you moving in the same direction, that's genius. And that's when you see things really get done. I mean, how many times do we see um, teams trying to function without direction? Or how many times do we Hmm. see an entrepreneur who struggles to build their business and 5, 10, 15 years later, they are still nowhere because the elements of personality and skill that they needed they didn't in, they didn't internalize all of them. They didn't have all those skills and gifts. And they were like, oh, I can do it myself. I'm not going to spend money on wasting my money on other people. But you don't have a team. You don't have a business. And I don't care whether that's people you pay or don't pay. But if you don't have a team, you don't have a real functional That business. is so true. That is so absolutely true. And we've seen it time and time again. 
I don't care how great you are personally. If you look at, let's take sports, for example, um, Michael Jordan, who many would consider to be one of the greatest uh, ball players of all time, had a coach. You look at LeBron Jordan, what they have in common? Coaches. You look at Olympic uh, skaters, whether it's uh, um, down slope skiing or figure skating, they all have coaches because you cannot see your own blind spots. Let, let me prove this real quick. I want everyone without the use of a mirror to tell me what's in the middle of your back. <laughs> so look, go ahead. Look, try. You cannot do it. You cannot see what's in back of you without some type of assistance, either a mirror or someone saying, hey, what's in back? And too often, People are trying to drive their car looking forward in reverse. You're going to hit something. That whole thing of not being able to see on your back, that just reminds me of that old <laughs> high school prank. Those oh, nasty yes. boys are always <laughs> putting mean notes on your Get back me. and other people's back. And everyone's laughing and you're like, what? 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because Until his friend says, you got yeah. something on your back. <laughs> exactly. Because we're designed. We're creative. We evolve to move forward, but you need someone to cover your rear. CYA, cover your assets. You need someone to cover your assets because you cannot see in back of you. So that's the purpose of a coach, to be able to do a 360, see what's in front, what's on the side. Now, you can see someone through your periphery, but you wouldn't it be better to have someone say, hey, I got you. And that's what coaching, that's what working with consultants do. Someone that yeah. can see what's in back of you or your past and help you make a path forward. So let's talk to you for a moment, going back to uh, don't be an ask <laughs> um, and the solutions, the actionable, actionable steps to, and, and if anyone's just joining us now, um, ASK stands for always seeking knowledge and parentheses after that would be never taking action. Mm -hmm. So one of the key points you said in um, taking action is focus and prioritizing. Yes. And what are some steps that our viewers can use to specifically increase their focus? Because I think prioritizing sometimes, you know, we do lists, but focus is hard. So talk about focus just a little. Yeah. So whenever you feel yourself distracted, you're looking at multiple different things, always ask yourself this question. This will bring you questions to your focus. And what you focus on, you tend to do. For example, if I'm distracted or I have three or four different ideas, how do I narrow that down to the one singular idea? By asking a question similar to this. What is in alignment with, a, with what I hold to be true? Mm -hmm. That question right there eliminates probably two thirds of them. This one uh, it doesn't feel right. This one, there's something about it. But which of these is in alignment with what I hold to be true? And that's going to help you narrow it down. There's other things, but just asking that simple question will at least help narrow your mm -hmm. opportunities and bring things closer into focus. Because remember, we've said this many, many times on this show. It's not always agreement, but it is about alignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As an example. Absolutely. No, I think that's so, so important. And it's, as you said, we, we mentioned that so many times. It is such a key element in the principles of a focused meta mindset. Uh, because when you're not in agreement, but you're in alignment, you can still have motion is how yes. I see it because you can work side by side in the same direction. But if you're going head to head in a narrow space and you can't get past each other, whether that's your own conflicting issues, whether that's a team member, whether that's mm. someone else in your world, you're going nowhere. If you have, I don't know, I just got back from Portugal and, you know, like many of the really old European cities, some of the streets in these old, old cities are barely the width of a very tiny Fiat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there's been more than once that I've basically gotten stuck by, you know, taking the wrong turn, ending mm -hmm. up in one of these tiny streets Like people's front doors, like literally they can't open their door if your car is there. That's how narrow it is. 
And so um, uh, we have fireworks going off, which is even I better. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> Um, so, uh, no, those are the sparks from my mirrors. I think that was what was happening anyway. And then here comes a car the other way. Uh, someone with a trailer who's really annoyed and wants to just make their delivery. And you didn't know it was one way street, et cetera, et cetera. Where are you going? Absolutely nowhere. So this point is, this is why we get deadlocked when mm. confrontation and when we are trying to always be in agreement we get deadlocked because the only way to get out of this being stuck is one person has to admit or take a defeating position and back away. That's ah, fine. I'll back away. You know, if you both back away, then you're like, you both come back in, right? It's like, it's my turn, it's my turn, it's my turn. I was being nice. Um, but instead, it's like, no, let's find a street that works. Let's go in alignment. We can have two lanes. We can go mm -hmm. side by side. And when we're side by side, we can both achieve our goal. Yeah. And that's such an important concept to understand in your meta mindset and how it, the ways it can change your life are endless. Yeah. It's like, for example, real quick, and then we got a break coming up. It's almost like saying, you know, I got this great big SUV trying to go through this narrow truck. We're heading the same direction. What if I park my SUV and we share a ride? There because you your car car is smaller and can navigate these narrow streets. Mm -hmm. Rather than I'm trying to force my way this great big SUV <laughs> that's going to tear up some stuff or injure mm -hmm. myself or get stuck. Yeah. And then unable to even get out of the vehicle. And so sometimes it's about, <laughs> you know what? We're heading the same direction. It's okay. I'm going to park my idea here and I'm going to join with Ann getting her vehicle because her vehicle will get us there quicker and safer than me being beholden to my great big grandiose idea. <laughs> And it's still about being in alignment because even if I get in your car or vice versa, we're still both facing forward and we're next yes. to each other. We're still in alignment going this way as opposed to having to be in agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fine line and people will always argue with that example, but it's such a powerful principle. Well, we do have to take our last break and we have a little more great stuff for you in our lifestyle segment coming up right after the break. We're going to talk about something right up the alley we've been discussing. Uh -huh. mm. People who always complain but never apply solutions. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Unleash the power of strategic neuroscience with Focused Meta Mindset Inc. Boost your decision making, sales, sustainable growth and customer engagement. Scan the QR code now for an exclusive consultation. Elevate your profitability with Focused Meta Mindset, Inc. Welcome back to our final segment of Focused Meta Mindstream, our show Meta Mindstream. Uh, so excited to have you here on our episode today. And we just finished uh, our business segment and it's called Don't Be an Ask, A-S-K. And if you didn't see that part, you're going to want to go back after this has uh, been recorded because it was it's a fun and very practical segment on what are the applications you can take um, to change your business right now. And as always, be in alignment, not necessarily agreement, brand new stuff. You're going to want to check it out. But now we're in our lifestyle segment, which is often the most fun. And what we're talking about today, again, people who aren't necessarily in alignment, Lyman, people who always complain but never apply mm -hmm. solutions. Oh, my goodness. I have had two or three prime examples of that in my life, also many smaller examples. Um, but in lifestyle, since we're talking about life now, uh, there's been a couple friendships that I've had mm. to... I'll call truncate, not terminate, but <laughs> limit, limit, mm -hmm. because um, I'm a sensitive person. I'm an intuitive person. I, you know, I reflect people's energy and I would hang out with someone who I'd known since childhood and they were so negative, not a family member, just to be clear, friend, mm -hmm. um, always complaining. All they ever did was complain. And um, as we got older, it just got worse. And finally, you know, as an adult, I had to be like, yeah, I'm just not being going to be so available anymore because it would get me so down. And 
I'm a natural born coach, which means it drives mm-hmm. my husband crazy because I always have a solution for everything. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't want a solution. He just wants to complain. So fair enough to each their own. <laughs> I understand it can be aggravating whichever side of the, uh, the wall you're on on that. Um, no, he, he takes very practical steps. But sometimes, you know, people just want to complain. And I think that's totally normal every now and then. But when that's your constant mode of conversation, you just can't do it anymore. I'm like, I can't. Here's 17 ways you could solve this problem or at least take one small step. Next time you go to lunch, it's the same old thing with this friend. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, I remember working in healthcare. Uh, I was a nursing assistant in high school. And... Um, this is the time I wanted to be a hospital nursing home administrator many, many years ago. And so I'm like 16, 17, working in this nursing home. And there was this uh, little old lady that uh, I would take care of. I would, you know, help get her ready in the morning, you know, bathe her, dress her and everything. And every time I got ready to leave, she would all magically and never fail. Oh, oh, I just got a pain. Can you come turn me over? And I would go and adjust her bed, turn her over, right? Getting ready to leave. Are you okay, Miss Johnson? Let's say her name is Miss Johnson. I remember her name. Yes, I'm fine. So later, oh, oh, can you come back and just sit with me? What's what's, what's wrong, Miss Johnson? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just feel. And what she really wanted was attention. And so what I realized is sometimes people complain because that's the only way they can get attention. Mm hmm. Absolutely. I think so. Because, you know, (laughs) I think it can become a rut and a habit. Mm. And obviously, some people fall into it more naturally with their personality type. (laughs) I have this one friend who is love this friend. I've known them my whole life. I'm not going to not be their friend, but they are very entertaining and they are a teller of tall tales. Have you ever met a teller of tall tales? Yeah. I don't know if that's your uncle we call or whatever. Liar. In, this, in this case, yeah. And they're like always the center of the party. Everybody loves them. And I'm out there listening and I've known them for too long, right? Because I'm yeah. like, yeah, sure you did. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my gosh. How could anyone believe you? And people are around like this, you know, like it's sort of like that addiction uh, being a complainer, being a negative, mm-hmm. especially with complaining. You get addicted, as you were saying, to being the center of attention. And maybe their life is boring. Maybe they don't think they're naturally interesting. Uh, maybe they are, grew up in a family of complainers, which in yes. one case, in my experience was true of this, of that person. And I felt bad for them, but that didn't mean that they didn't pull me down every time I was around them because <laughs> I was like, I just can't do it anymore. So the good news is being coming aware of, you know, complaining as a habitual complaining, but never applying solutions is a step in the right direction. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. You know, that attention seeking behavior going back to family dynamics. And sometimes it can be the only way I was recognized was either I got in trouble or Mm -hmm. I created these Mm -hmm. tall tales. Mm -hmm. Now, in the business world, we call those misstatements of the fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, from where I come from, you just write out lying. You just telling a tall lie. Black, white, pink, yellow is still a lie (laughs) because it's untruth. But we like to dress it up. Um. I always say if you have a child, for example, that tells a lot of uh, tall tales, that might be an indication this person being an author or into film where they create these stories. And I I remember uh, as a child, I had a friend the same way and that would create these stories that were so believable (laughs) that people would walk around and say, oh, did you hear what so-and-so did? He blah, blah, blah. And someone say, that never happened. He just made that up. But he told the story with such conviction and was animated that he had all of us duped into thinking this person was telling us the truth. Absolutely. Well, and I've gotten my, I've stepped on a few tales by accident in that, including my (laughs) own, because I'll be like, no, he didn't. I went to school with him. And they're like, no, they said he went to school in, like, he lived in New York City when he went to high school. I'm like, I have pictures of us in high school in California. What do you want from me? They're like, no, no, he he went to, I'm like, 
And what's really like, always astonishing to me is that they people really truly believe it. And they believe mm-hmm. it to such an extent that when you contradict it with, you know, like you bring a photo, I actually brought a photo once. And the person in <laughs> question, the one who was believing this tall tale was like, yeah, no, that doesn't make sense. Like there's actually a, a shut off. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's incredible <laughs> what people can do. And I do not support the behavior. If someone's been a friend for life, there's certain kinds of people that you can't just leave forever but they're too close to the fold, but, you know, or sometimes family members, mm-hmm. right? You're going to see them on holidays, but, you know, how do you, how do you choose to spend your own time? And for myself, how can I focus on um, taking action as mm-hmm. we've talked about today, instead of complaining, because yes. complaining without action is just it's lame. I'm going to come up with a different mm-hmm. word. It's weak. It's it's not a vibrant way to live your life. It's a guaranteed disaster. Your life will just keep getting worse because, as we all know, with the most basic neuroscience, what you focus on is what you create. So if you're complaining all the time, you're going to just create more complaining, more drama, and you're never going to get out of that hole, which is something we're actually going to talk about in the next mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> one, one of the things you were talking about that it reminded me remember that segment i think it was saturday night live the whiners oh yeah <laughs> you know the cousins to the whiners are the complainers okay <laughs> you and generally they kind of work off of each other when you have someone that will whine about well i don't know just help me oh woe is me that's my whiner's voice y'all for those of you that are listening and then you have the complainers that are cousins to them. Well, I don't understand why this happens. Always, you know, good example. Well, how's the weather? It's nice out, man. It's too damn hot. You go out there, it might get sunburned. It's raining. Now, the farmers, they love, I've been waiting on the rain, you know, for my flower bed. All this damn rain, I can't even go outside. <laughs> no. Wow, right, we can build a snowman. All this snow, I got to get out there and shovel it. Gosh, it's the truth. It's the truth, and 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 I think that those, you know, and what these people don't realize is they're really digging a hole. H period, O period, L period, E period, which is the second part of yeah. this theme today. It's going to be our next episode. So today was don't be an ask. The next episode is going to be don't be a hole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we're going to have a little bit more fun. We hope you will all join us. And um, and thank you again for sticking with us here today. If you had fun, please share this link with someone who would enjoy and appreciate it. And, uh, and also like and subscribe so we can keep this coming to you. As always, we are streaming right here this day and time. And after our live stream, you also have the recorded version on the same link. So we'll see you next time. And make sure you're not being an ask. Oh! <laughs>